can marketing actually be simple? I had an opportunity to ask a new friend that question, and well, the answer was shockingly simple. Yes! And in today's episode, it's all about how to do exactly that. Make your marketing simple. Welcome to the Affiliate Guy podcast. If you want to grow your income, serve your tribe, and enjoy all the benefits of affiliate marketing and having your own affiliates, you're in the right place. Thanks for joining me today. Let's get started. So I had a, a chance to interview an amazing man recently, someone that I've, I've admired him from afar for, for quite some time. His name is J.J. Peterson, and Dr. J.J. Peterson. He's actually the, the chief of teaching and facilitation for StoryBrand. Uh, you may know that from Don Miller. Uh, he's the co-host of one of my favorite podcasts, Building a Story Brand. He co-hosts it with Don. Uh, he's, he's got a PhD in communication. So this guy, I mean, he's crazy smart, but he makes things so simple. Uh, I mean, he's, he's literally, gosh, his story, his, his story is amazing. You're going to hear some of like his experience and how he applies that to business and marketing. Got some amazing lessons to share with you today about how to make marketing simple. And guess what? It really is. So I really, I really, I don't want to delay you from getting to hear from JJ any longer. So we're going to dive right in to my interview with JJ Peterson. Well, welcome JJ. Well, thanks for having me. Uh, man, it is so good to talk to you about this book, guys. It's over my, this is my left. I have, uh-huh. I'm 40 years old and I now know my left from my right. So that's good. <laughs> uh, so this is uh, this book, Marketing Made Simple. Um, you co-wrote it with a guy that a lot of people might know, like not from marketing or business, at least if yeah. you go back, you know, more than about five, six, seven years, yeah. uh, named Donald Miller. Yep. Uh, so tell us uh, real quick before we get into th- this book and some of the, the concepts in the book, tell us a little bit about, um, you know, how, how that all came about and how maybe a little bit, uh, how Don got into this world and then how you got into Don's world. Yeah. So, you know, my world is, it felt very eclectic. I would say a lot of people thought for a long time that I just kind of jumped around a lot. Uh, <laughs> Because I in in undergrad I studied public relations and I ended up working for a nonprofit doing marketing and public relations and okay. fundraising uh, that and then I've worked for a couple different international nonprofits doing community development. Then I was a youth pastor for a little while and then I was I did improv comedy for a little while. Okay, you uh, weren't joking. You have been all yeah, over the place. <laughs> yeah, and I, I toured for about three years doing improv comedy professionally. And then um, I went back and got my master's in uh, theology and the arts, so study of story in in television and music. And um, and then I became a professor, so I started teaching communication for a number of years. And then I also, in that process of kind of doing comedy and teaching, I also was a writer, so I wrote some things for television, and I did some things in television and film. And so... You, you'd see that kind of trajectory. And I remember people saying to me, like, you, you jump around all the time. You kind of are in all these different areas. But for me, to be very honest, and it wasn't even one of those things in, like, looking back, I figured it out. For me, it was always about telling good stories, period. Mm-hmm. Like, all of the things that I did, whether it was trying to raise money to build homes in the slums in Tijuana or do AIDS education in Africa, um, or teaching at universities, or doing comedy, or, you know, doing television and film. It was always about storytelling, because it's kind of funny. um, I actually remember the moment I was sitting in a movie theater, watching the movie Armageddon, um, which you know, is not, I would say, not one of those, like, Oscar-winning kind of stories. Right? <laughs> it didn't win like, best script, did it? Oh, no, no, it did not. A lot of things blowing up and really cheesy acting and everything. But there's, I'm going to do spoiler if you haven't seen it, but it's over 10 years ago, so I think I'm okay spoiling it. But at the end <laughs> of the movie, um, Ben Affleck is going to have to dis- – <laughs> even saying it out loud is kind of funny. Ben Affleck is going to have to – be close to a nuclear bomb to destroy it on an asteroid that makes the asteroid split and miss the earth. And he's drawn the short straw. He's going to go out and right as he does, um, Bruce Willis basically goes down with him and shoves him back in and takes his place. Right. And essentially sacrifices himself 
for the sake of the world. And I'm in this movie theater and it's cheesy and everything, yeah. you know, uh, Aerosmith is singing in the background and all of these different things. And there were people crying in the movie theater. And I just, it was one of those moments with this super cheesy movie that I was like, oh, stories have the ability to tell truths in a way that a lot of people can't naturally. Like they really just hone in and do this creative, in a very creative way, communicate truth with power and focus. And Mm -hmm. That is when I actually decided to go and study story. Um, And I had been telling stories in different ways. And so it was Armageddon, Ben Affleck, and Bruce Willis. (laughs) They really got me, like, showed me, oh, there is, like, there is storytelling that can happen that can move people to action and change the way people think. And um, that was kind of always my trajectory. And Donna Miller was an expert storyteller. I mean, he had written, he had studied story. He had written stories. He had written a number of different memoirs. He had written a screenplay for Hollywood and had been studying stories. So both of us kind of were studying story separately and in two separate ways. Mine was in the space of, uh, in screenwriting, but also then in marketing and public relations and arguments, uh, making, you know, debate kind of stuff at the college level. And his was memoir and screenplays. And he came upon the whole concept of story brand um, a few years before I met him, even met him. And we met when I was dean of students at a college. I had invited him in to speak And I had just sold a reality television show to a production company and was leaving the school to produce this TV show. And like the last thing I did before I left the college was bring him in to speak. And we just became friends because we kind of had this like love of storytelling. And he invited me out to go to the story brand workshop and um, to brand my television show. And I had been doing, you know, I wasn't new to communication by any stretch of the imagination or marketing or anything. And so I kind of went to just see what this guy was doing, right? Like what, what's the story brand stuff all about in teaching companies how to tell a better story and communicate clearly with their messaging and marketing or individuals, companies, all that stuff. So I went out and I was blown away. I flew out from LA to Nashville and I went through the workshop and I was just blown away because he had taken story, this idea of story. Story is such a buzzword when it comes to promotion or marketing and such a buzzword, but most people don't understand how to tell a good story or they think you kind of have to be just a naturally charismatic person. It's charismatic people that tell good stories or when you're creating marketing or a website that you have to have all of this training and all this stuff. So we spend so much time guessing out and throwing it. It feels like we're throwing spaghetti at a wall and seeing what sticks. Yeah. We're just guessing what message we're supposed to be putting out there. And he showed me through the understanding of how story works, that it's actually very formulaic and anybody can be a good storyteller. And anybody who's been in the business world or been doing stuff for a while understands, I would say, most of these concepts. Like mm-hmm. if, you, if, you, if you're good at business and good at communicating, a lot of these things probably came natural to you like they came to me. But what the story brand framework is really just boils it down and says, these are the seven things that make up a good story. It's formulaic. And when you understand how this works, you can then create very easily, very simply, you can create any kind of marketing that you want, whether it's a website, emails, lead generators, um, one-liners, sales pitches, any of that stuff, you just have a formula to say, this is what to say, and this is why to say it. So that's kind of how I got to where I am. (laughs) So that, if I'm not mistaken, that brings the total number of people whose lives have been this dramatically impacted by the movie Armageddon to one. I, 
Mm, I don't know about that. I mean, I, I would say it's probably a pretty large group of people that were crying at the end of that movie. No, so. I mean, but their lives were impacted <laughs> yeah. so much that their like the course, their career trajectory <laughs> changed, and they ended up moving across the country eventually to Nashville. Yeah. And I would wear like, that badge. I, I think wear that badge. Yeah, it's probably one. It's probably one. I think you're the only person because uh, everybody else cried and went eh, and then moved on. Yeah. You you completely went in like a completely different direction. Yeah. And and there's something you made me think about as you were saying that, and like you know I've followed Don for for years. Um, I think I've read almost, I think if I've not read every one of his books, I've read probably all but one. I don't know what that one would be. I'm just, I know I've read a bunch of them <laughs> and uh, we have a lot of mutual friends. And so I've, I've interacted with his stuff for, you know, four or five years now. Yeah. And I, I intellectually knew the power of story, but I never got it like I never, it never solidified to me until one day I was, I was delivering a presentation. I delivered, it was probably the 15th, 20th time I delivered it. And I was talking to people about lead magnets, you know, which is something you guys talk about in the book, but I was, and I was teaching them what a lead magnet is. And I'd never been bad at describing it. We had successful students, people paid us money, blah, blah, blah. And out of nowhere, I just said, you know, come to think of it, my dad had the greatest lead magnet. My dad passed away in 2005, never owned a computer, never had a cell phone that I know of, he never got on the internet. My dad was a golf instructor and he'd walk up and down the tee and he'd see somebody who was struggling. He'd give them one tip, one quick win. And they'd turn to him and say, they'd hit that drive, the best drive of their life. They'd turn to him and say, oh my gosh, it's the best drive I ever hit. How do I give you money? And he'd sell them a thousand dollar golf instruction package. And I was like, wait a minute, that's a lead magnet. That's what it's the, he, he tweaked one little thing, helped yep. them in five minutes. And now they want to give him a thousand dollars. I was like, why have I been struggling to describe this to people who don't understand it for two years? Just tell that story. We tell yeah. that story. All, I have told that story 500 times now. Like I'm almost wow. sick of hearing it, but that's the, that's the power of story. Cause immediately people go, got it. Yeah. Got and, it. And that's even the, the principle of the book is really that it's actually a lot simpler than you think, right? Mm -hmm. Like what you're talking about is if you probably went to your dad and said, dad, you need to create lead generators. You need to create lead magnets. He what? Was, that's super overwhelming and everything. And what he, all he did is he identified, and this is what we kind of teach in the book and through the story brand framework. He saw a character, he saw mm -hmm. a, a potential customer. So somebody on the, on the range, he identified what they ultimately needed from him, what the character wants, which is he, in relationship to your dad's brand, they want golf lessons. They want to get better at their golf game. Right. Yep. And, but there's a problem that they're experiencing. It might be the swing that they have or something. And his whole job as a brand is to overcome the customer's problem, the character's mm -hmm. problem. And so he just gave them one small tip to overcome a problem that established his authority as their guide, which yep. is a part of the framework. So he established a little bit of authority and then they trusted him to give them a plan to move forward, right? And that's all out of the framework. So a, a story, the way story works is there's seven elements. And the seven elements are, in any good story, you identify who the main character is. And that character wants something. In a movie, it's very clear in the first nine minutes that the character wants, you know, to win the girl, get the job, um, finish the marathon, you know, whatever it is, we know. Yeah character wants something and it's very clear. Well, that is, that is the same thing in your marketing. You have to be able to identify and speak, identify very quickly what it is that your customer wants. Your customer is the hero of the story. Then the character in the story is, has a problem that no, no story is good without any problem, right? If I'm just sitting on my couch all day happy, that doesn't make a good movie. <laughs> you know, they have to experience something difficult. Well, your customer is experiencing something difficult that they cannot overcome themselves. They have a problem. And you as a brand have to identify and speak to that problem and say, talk about your customer's problem over and over and over. Here's a problem. Here's a problem. Here's a problem. Then you position yourself as the guide. So in any good movie, there is a guide. There is Obi-Wan Kenobi or Luke for Luke Skywalker. There is Yoda for Luke Skywalker. There's Gandalf for Frodo and Lord of the Rings. There is somebody who's going to help the hero win the day. And in marketing, that's you. And you have to establish yourself with empathy and authority that you understand their problems and you've helped other people along the way. Then you, then you have to give them a plan in any good movie. Uh, the, he, the guide gives the hero a plan. This is how you're going to win the day. You have to give your customers a plan. 
then there's a moment that the hero is called to action. You have to call your customer to action by telling them to buy now or this is the next step. And then you have to show them what life is like on the other side. If they don't trust you, there is failure. If they do buy from you, there is success. And what does that look like? So every movie has that formula. There is a character who wants something, who encounters a problem, who meets a guide, who helps them by giving them a plan calls them to action, and then we know what failure and success looks like. And that's what you have to have in your marketing as well. So that's why I say what I said in the beginning is that for people who have been doing this for a while, like your dad, they, there's some natural things that just kind of, they do naturally that they know leads to success for their brand. But a lot of people don't understand why. And what the story brand framework really does is say, this is why you've experienced success when you've done these things, these like things is because your customer is living a story. And when you can tap into that story and you can speak to that story, in fact, even invite them into a story, you will be able to connect with them even better and help them win the day. And then what the the book marketing made simple itself does is say, all right, now that you've understood the story, that there is a story your customer is living and this is the language I need to use to talk about that story. It says, here's just very simply how to put that on a website, how to write emails, how to create lead generators, how to talk about what you do in a way that people engage. We call that a one-liner. So it's very simple in that there is actually a formula to this. You don't, you don't have to keep guessing at things anymore, guessing what you, how you talk about your company, guess about what words need to be on your website, guess what needs to be in your email. It's actually formulaic. And we show you that formula and then show you how to write those things. Very. Yeah, I personally think that, you, you know, you and Donald have completely ruined movies for me. <laughs> he ruined them for me. I'll tell you I, that. I gotta be honest. You've like completely screwed. <laughs> I, I it, it, because there are times, you know, I like, thankfully, if I go read like a biography, you mm-hmm. know, it doesn't, it, it follows it somewhat, but at least then it's like real and I can't predict, you know, ooh, is Thomas Edison going to invent, wait, that, yeah, I already know that part, never mind. But, you know, like I watch <laughs> the movies now, these are fictional movies and I'm like, you know, that's yes. about to happen. Yep. I'm like, okay, we're seven minutes in. All right. So pretty much got the whole mission of his thing. He's going to do this. Some guy's going to come along probably somebody younger than him or, you know, now I figured that out. It's going to be an unexpected guy. It's not going to be an expected. I mean, it's like, yes. Because there's times I just want to watch a movie and enjoy the movie guys. Thanks a lot. Trust me. Trust me. Because I come at it even through like uh, my PhD is in narrative marketing. So understanding the story. So I even come at it from like five different theories and lenses. And so I can't, like if I want to enjoy a movie, I have to see it a second time because the first time, I'm I'm going and there I'm going through all the different scenarios and seeing how it fits or where it breaks the formula and then why it's bad because it breaks the formula. Because there's actually there's a book by this guy named Blake Snyder that's called Save the Cat. And there when I lived in LA, about every two or three years there would be an article in the LA Times that said why Blake Snyder has ruined Hollywood. (laughs) Because basically in this book, he shows you how formulaic stories are and how to write a great blockbuster story. And so he literally goes page by page. It's called beat by beat, which basically comes into page by page of what needs to be in a movie. And a page in a screenplay is about a minute in a movie. So you actually can figure out what minute by minute looks like in every single movie. In, in, and here's the, here's the thing is if you want to reach the masses, if you want blockbuster movies. Now, independent movies are um, tend to be break the rules a little bit, but the thing about it is they're not as accessible. Mm -hmm. For me, that is a huge, you know, independent movies aren't seen by wide, wide audiences. They're thinkers. You have to go dive a little bit deeper, even some documentaries. Now, most of them actually do follow the formula, but they follow it in a little bit more creative way. They break some of the rules, but they know why they're breaking the rules. And that is a real lesson for even our marketing and messaging is if you want to do a blockbuster movie, you follow the formula because you're going to reach the masses. In our messaging, when we follow the formula, we actually have a broader audience. We can speak to a broader audience. We are more accessible. A lot of people want to just be cute and creative and artistic, and that is wonderful. 
but you're an independent. Think of that in terms of an independent movie. You may reach a niche audience, but you're not going to reach the masses. Um, and if you if you do it on accident, you're lucky. If you do it on purpose, you're a genius because you know the rules and then you break them. But that's actually really hard to do and much less accessible. Um, and so a lot of people try to start with their – they try to come up with a tagline that is super clever and cute and catchy in their minds to do their marketing. And that's great, but clarity will always beat cute and clever. Always. It always will. And so don't, when you follow and what, what a story does is by understanding the formula of story and telling a clear story, you're going to be able to reach the masses easier. You know, and that's something that you, um, probably like chapter three or four of the book you talked about, you guys did a study where you like, okay, we we have all these people you've worked with, you worked with, you know, I don't know, 10,000 people, roughly, you know, companies, which of them were successful? And the ones, I, I just thought this was fascinating because we tell our students this all the time. It's like the ones who were successful, at least on the front end, were the ones who followed the formula. Like yeah. they didn't vary. They, yeah. they, they just followed it. And it's like, you know, the, we all know this. We know this intellectually. You yeah. know, Tony Robbins says so many times, success leaves clues. Uh, the, like the quickest way to get to, you know, a million, $10 million in your business, even maybe 20, 30 million, is just to follow the formula. Now, I think we'd all agree that if you're going to become like a a runaway, you know, hit like an Amazon or an Apple, you're going to have to like, you know, Apple had to invent the iPod, you know, like, but they didn't, they didn't invent the MP3 player that already existed, you know, but they had, they did have to get out, but they, you know, I mean, they they followed the formula. They did. And what they did with the formula is basically Steve Jobs came back and said, I want one button Mm -hmm. because he's like, I want it simple. I want it easy to use. I want it simple. And a lot of people at the time were like, you can't do, you can't do one button. Like you can't. And he's like, no, I want it easy and accessible. I want it clear because really, and and we talk about this in building a story brand, which is the kind of the precursor to this book. Um, Donald Miller wrote building a story brand. And in there, he really talks about how our brains work, that our brains are really designed to do a couple things. They're designed to, help us survive and thrive. So we're always looking for what helps us survive and thrive. And the second part is we're trying to conserve calories because we actually have a limited number of decision-making calories in our brain, right? That the more we have to think and process, our brains get tired. That's why like when you're in a, in a meeting all day, a creative meeting all day, you're exhausted by the end and you're like, how am I so tired? I just sat here all day. Well, you didn't. Your brain was having to be engaged and you were having to think all the time. In fact, our our brains daydream about 30% of the day. That is a survival mechanism because our brains turn off, right? So we don't have to think. Yeah, good point. And when you go into a movie and you follow a story, it actually does the daydreaming for you because it all kind of follows and you make sense of things yeah. when it's good, when it's a good movie, or you even say like you hear somebody's reading a book and I say, I got lost in the book. Well, it is doing that thinking for you because it's formulaic. And when you actually have to think and make decisions, our brain is designed to tune out. Like when you walk into a Starbucks, um, you actually like, you, you don't know how many mugs are against the wall. You don't know how many chairs are in the room. You don't know how many sugar packets are there. That's all information that your brain is immediately deciding. I don't need to know those things to survive and thrive. Mm-hmm. I need to know where the coffee is and I need to know where the exits are. Right. Those are like, that's pretty yeah. much it. Yeah. Unless you're going in shopping for something specific, then your mind goes, there's the mugs. I need to go to the mugs. But other than that, you're tuning out all the other information that doesn't contribute to your survival and thriving. And you don't want to have, because if you had to process all that, you'd be like, oh, there's this many sugar packets. Look at this. Let's count them. Oh, da, da. And you actually wouldn't go anywhere. You'd never get coffee. You would, you would die. You would literally die. Yeah. And brain is designed to basically clear out all that clutter and not pay attention to it. 
And just so that, like, for instance, if a big decision that you have to think about comes up later, you actually have the capacity to do it. If barbarians are going to come over the hill and attack you, you have the brain power left to make the decisions to survive. So your brain is just looking constantly. Is this going to help me survive and thrive? Okay, I can think about it. Is this going to help me survive? If it's not, it's gone. Well, it's the same thing with your messaging right? If your brain is not, if your messaging is too clever and cute, or even like on a iPod, if there was multiple buttons, we have to burn too many calories to think about it. And that our brain goes, Ugh, it's too complicated. I don't want to pay attention to that. Mm. Well, you've probably heard people say that, right? Ugh, it's too yeah. complicated. Da, da, da. And well, that's actually a survival mechanism, right? Mm. So why why that matters when it comes to messaging and marketing in particular is your message has to be so clear, so easy to understand and focused on your customer's survival and thrival, uh, survival, and thriving, survival and thriving that they don't have to burn any calories to think I don't about like that word, actually. that clear so, and survival and thrival. <laughs> yeah, I like thr- thr- thrival. Thrival. <laughs> I like that word. It's new like word. a new word. I mean, how, how are you going to thrival in times yeah. like this? Uh, <laughs> yes. Um, yeah, so, one of the things I got out of that was, uh, and I and I've and I've heard Don talk about that before, but the calories. But there's something that you said that just made me think about. It. It's like uh, I need to eat more bacon. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, you know, I mean, I need to give like my out of this calories. Discussion. Yep. What I heard was get more calories to my brain. Yep. Um, no, I, like I love this. You know, I I think um, you know again going back to that the the, the thing where it's like we follow the formula. It, it's because it's like. M- 99.99%. I'm sure there are outliers. 99.99% of the world's population, their brains function in, in systemically the same way. Yep. You know, and, and we're still all, you know, in, whether you believe in microevolution, macroevolution, doesn't matter. We are yep. descended from some form of, of people who hunted and killed and ran for survival. And none of us do that today, except for yep. like the men in the <laughs> Calvary bush. Yep. There's like 18 people left who at any moment in time, a saber-toothed tiger could just jump out of the wild and either you kill it and your family eats or it kills you. That's yep. not going to happen to any of us. Yep. And so here we are, we're sitting at our computer screens, we're marketing a, a cleaning business, we're marketing a, a, a brand, a platform, you know, a blog, a YouTube channel, but yep. yet our brains are still operating like the guy who's going like this all the time, you know, yep. and that's, that's how we are. And so again, that's why the formula works because the formula right. is like a, it's a 25,000 plus year old formula. It's not like it was invented yesterday. It, it yeah. is like, guys, I just want to say before we you know, move on to a few more questions, get the book, get the book. We'll put a link wherever you're If it's in the show notes, below the video, wherever we're going to put the link, make it simple for you. We're going to make it simple to get a book called marketing made simple, uh-huh. uh, make it easy for you. Uh, get the book and then follow the formula. Like, don't uh, do me a yep. favor. Don't try to add or subtract from it or go. Don't zig when you should, you know, just, just go like straight, just straight. Follow the formula. Tell you what, take a bet. Like, do do this with me. Follow the formula for six months. If for some, if you're in the 0.01% and your audience is in the 0.01% and for some reason it doesn't work, we'll figure something else out. But I, yeah. I bet what will happen is you'll start to get some momentum. Yeah. And for many of you, that means going full time. For many of you, that means taking your business to the next level. So, um, JJ, I just have a couple of uh, last questions uh, that have nothing to do with cats, uh, Armageddon, or bacon. <laughs> and I got to say something real quick. Yeah. Um, this is probably going to end up being the only interview I've ever done that I actually listened to. <laughs> it's just like you've dropped so much wisdom already. Like, I, I never listen to my interviews. I'm like, I'm done with the interview. I got what I needed. You know, let's mm-hmm. release it as content. I'm, I'm going to go back and listen to this. I just, I just okay. think that's, I just think it's awesome. So, because uh, I've got some notes over here for, for our own stuff that uh, are, are pretty powerful. So, um, one of the things that you talk about in the book is the, so these stages of a relationship. And, you know, you, you, you I knew this intellectually, but again, it was like a really good reinforcer for me that marketing is a relationship. Yeah, um, I always use the analogy of of, of dating and marriage, and um, but here's something that you said um, in the book that I just think, uh, gosh, this made a huge difference. You talk about commitment. You said yeah. this is, and I, and I just want to acknowledge you guys because, and you can let Don know this. This actually helped us last week. Mm, yay! I was reading the book to get ready for this interview, and you said there are two main reasons why people don't buy. You don't ask for the sale. I don't have any problem with that. We ask for the sale all the time. You ask too early. And immediately I went, oh my gosh, 
because we have we have a sales page that was down a little bit this year because we raised the price this year, but the, the, otherwise the sales page is exactly the same. And I went, oh, last year when the price was lower, we could ask for the sale above the fold. Yes. I don't think we can. Let's split test that. We improved our conversion rate by four and a half percent. Mm. All we did was remove the top sales, the top button. That's all we did, JJ. That's how simple it was. And I went, we're asking too soon. They need more. They got to get more into the rhythm and, and see, you know, what we, they need to establish value. So I just wanted to thank you for that. That was wow, huge. Interesting. Tens of and thousands we would of dollars. still say, I mean, I, just in the formula, because if people read the book, they'll see this. We would still say you do want to ask for the sale above the fold in the sense of like call to action. However, yeah. If that's the only thing you're doing and you're not introducing, you're not telling the customer story, you're not building rapport with um, with lead generators or uh, lead magnets that actually give them value, you're not doing any of that stuff, then just asking for the sale is doesn't work. And it, again, the lower the price product, the earlier you can ask for yep. the sale, the harder you can ask for the sale, the the higher the price product is you're selling a $10,000 um, consulting. You can't just go buy now, buy now, buy now. It, you, you have to build the relationship. It takes a longer, the, the stronger the commitment, the harder the commitment is to get, the longer you have to actually build relationship. And you can do that a number of different ways on your website, through lead magnets, through nurture campaigns, all the stuff, but you're right. So that's really interesting that you even discovered that the, as your price went up, you actually had to do more of the building of the relationship. Yeah, again, because this was a direct to sales page, like we had traffic going and this was like, there was no sequence, you know, for this particular offer. It was, you came to the website, you either gave us money or you left, yep. you know, for th that's not normally how we do it, but for this thing it was. And last year, our conversion rate was like, you know, 12 and a half percent. And I think, okay, we're raising the price. I think it'll drop to eight. And it was actually f like four. And I went, oh, wow. Okay, I was like, "What are we doing wrong?" And we we couldn't figure it out. Like, and it yeah. was like, "What are we? We can't lower the price because you know, you had four percent with a five times higher price. We're typically still making more money, you know." I was like, "No, it should be higher." And I was reading that pair that section, and I went, "That's that's." I mean, I literally like, I won't say what I was doing. I may or may not have been going to the bathroom when I was reading that. <laughs> And as soon as I was done, like I wasn't going to write it on toilet paper because we're recording this during a toilet paper. Show. So I went out, grabbed some paper, and I was like get rid of the top sales button. Like just yeah. test, you know, we did a split test and sure enough, it was, I said four, it was actually really like a 10% technically oh, gosh, um, higher. I mean, you know, if you want to use marketer math. So again, that was, you know, for our bottom line, it was tens of thousands of dollars. Yeah. Um, and that's really, we talk about it in the book. We say that there really are three levels of the relationship. There is yep. curiosity where somebody becomes curious about what you do. Then there is enlightenment where they learn about what you do and how you serve them and help them on the journey. And then there's the commitment. And really the, by using the story formula, you kind of begin to discover how you position your products and service in a way that helps people first become curious about it. And then next, enlighten them about what you do and how you solve their problems, and then ultimately ask for the commitment. And in Marketing Made Simple, we walk through and say, your one-liner and your website should really live in that curiosity space, building curiosity about what you do. And then your website starts to move it to enlightenment, and your web kind of is that transition. It can be curiosity and then enlightenment. And then in the enlightenment phase, you're really doing website and um lead magnets and a little bit of nurture emails and then commitment is really nurture emails and sales emails. And so if you don't think of it that way, that you're really trying to help people understand and build relationship with you and just go, well, buy now, buy now, buy now, then you're going to lose because it's like somebody on the first date going, Hey, will you marry me? Now that might occasionally work for some people. And you hear those stories, right? right? All the time. We hear those stories all the time of where it's like on our first date, I knew and I asked her to marry me and we were together for 30 years. You do hear those stories, but that's not the norm. And so <laughs> don't try to live in that space of the 2% of the people that that works for. Live in what, like you mentioned, live in what the majority of people work for. Get, live in that space. Yeah. And I think on that, I mean, the person who is like, they, they know they're going to marry and they, they, it's going to work they'll still like, they'll make it through the next two phases. Yeah. You know? so <laughs> yeah you're, you're, exactly. you're like the, that 1% of your potential customers who are like, they are right. They're in such pain or, or in a position where they're ready to just give you money. 
if you make them wait just a little bit, <laughs> they're, they're not going anywhere. Yeah. Like if you get them through enlightened, they're going to be like, Oh, now I'm even more of a fan. How do I give you more money? You know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so it really does work. And so again, guys, that's curiosity, enlightenment and commitment. Those are the three phases. So lastly, um, JJ, I just want to walk through these, uh, just the five steps, kind of the five, this, and again, guys, like the point is like, follow the formula and right? get the book and follow the formula, you know, go into a lot more and like literally there's an entire chapter about each of these five steps. We're going to touch on like, you know, if this was an audio book, it's probably like an hour and a half on these five steps. We're not going to spend that long. Yeah. Newsflash. <laughs> yeah. uh, but there's five stages of the marketing plan. Uh, can you just give us a quick overview of what that looks like and kind of how we take people through because really what you're doing is taking them through this, these three steps within these, these five steps. So there yep. are five, three phases, but right? this is requiring an abacus. Um, <laughs> See, you're causing people to burn calories. Cause people to burn. Um, oh gosh, screwed that one up. Yeah. Um, so go eat some bacon. <laughs> yeah. And then we're ready to go. A slice uh, of bacon. And yeah, take yeah. us through those five steps. So we would say that there are really five things you need to create in a sales funnel. And that's really what this is, is you're building, when you're building relationship, you're using a sales funnel to build relationship. And there are five tools that you create. The first is a one-liner. And the one-liner really builds curiosity. And a one-liner is different than a tagline, it, but it, what it is, is it explains to people what you do in a way that engages them in the story they want to live. And, um, you know, earlier I said that there were seven parts of a good story, um, in a one-liner, you're telling a short story. So you're taking three of those pieces and creating a short story. And the one-liner is uh, basically where you describe the problem your customer is experiencing, the way that you solve it, and what their life looks like after. So problem, solution, results. And there's a formula to it. So instead of when somebody says, what do you do? And you say, I'm a business consultant. They're like, oh, that's interesting. Well, if you actually instead use the formula to tell their story, it looks a little bit more like this. You identify the problem they're experiencing, your solution, and success. So you say, um, they say, what do you do? And you say, well, a lot of people in business get to a certain point where they hit a ceiling and they don't know why. That's a problem. I come alongside and I actually coach them to f um, discover their um their greater capacity through weekly phone calls and accountability and give them a plan. And then we, I've seen over and over that when they do that, they actually get better results out of their business. They get raises, they grow um, and get promotions. Mm -hmm. I just kind of made that up off the top of my head. So it's a little clunky, well, but for made up off the top of your head, by the way, but <laughs> problem solution results, right? So for us at StoryBrand, it's really when somebody goes, what do you do? I don't say I do marketing and consulting unless I don't want to talk to them about it anymore. <laughs> then I just go, I'm a marketing consultant. Mm -hmm. And they Regular. go, oh, that's fine. But instead, if I say something along the lines of, you know, they say, what do you do? And I say, most companies have a hard time explaining what they do in a way that engages customers um, because they're just too close to their products. So we actually have developed a formula to help them create a marketing plan that builds relationships with their customers. And they've seen their business go, grow, customers engage more, and they save time and money in creating new marketing. Mm -hmm. So problems and results. So that's the one line. On that, that I don't know if you guys knew this, but I love, I, I realized this as I was reading the book that I love about starting with the P mm -hmm. the problem. Mm -hmm. So we actually use this acronym, just PSR. You know, we, we remind ourselves all the time. That's how we have to communicate. Yep. Uh, the thing I love about the P that I never caught was if some, what, there's only one of two responses to the P that's yep. me or well, it's not me. Yep. Cool. Yep. Like that's the best part about starting with the P is immediately they're going, I got that problem. I'm so interested in the next words out of your mouth or I don't have that problem. I don't really care. Yep. You know, even like think it. about it from just a very simplistic perspective. If you sell Tums and you say, you know, so many people after they eat, you know, spicy food, their stomach is, has indigestion. Well, that really narrows down what you solve. If somebody has a headache, they're not buying Tums. Nope. So it, it, it self-selects people out, right? Yeah, I love that. Self-selection so is so important. Guiding people into a story. And then from like people who have platforms or trying to build their business in new ways, they're, they're growing to that next level. You don't want to waste time with people who you're not going to help solve their problem. 
you don't want to even get into those conversations, right? So by starting with your customer's problem, they are self-selecting and either saying, yes, that's my story or no, it's not. And yes, you're going to the person who can help me or no, you're not because this is not my problem. So you're beginning to just ideally after that sentence or sentences, all you want them to do is go, well, tell me more. Or that's like, yes, that's me. That's totally me. Tell me more. That's the curiosity part. So we teach you how to build a one-liner. And then from there, they should really get you to ideally, if we're walking this through like somebody at a cocktail party, you tell you hand them your card with your website on it. And they should then go to the website and learn, get, they're curious. They want to know a little bit more about you and they need to be enlightened. So one-liner and then website. So we teach you in there how to actually build your website in a way that helps continue to build the curiosity and then also enlightens them on what you do in a way that's clear and compelling and doesn't like, and doesn't break the rules. So one liner website, and then you also need a lead magnet or a lead generator, a way to get people's email addresses, to get their phone numbers, to get some kind of contact information so that you can follow up with emails or a sales call. Um, and so that's the third level is develop a lead generator. We show you how to do that to give people value and help them in their story. And then ultimately, you need to follow that up with um, nurture emails that continue to build the relationship and then sales emails that ask for the commitment. That, and all of those kind of, they, they weave a little bit together, but that's really the process of building curiosity, enlightenment, commitment is one-liner, website, lead generator, nurture email, sales emails. And what's, you know, we did not obviously plan to release this during a pandemic, you know. Um, But what's amazing about it is that I really believe that people who want to survive, they need a sales funnel because this book teaches you how to continue building a relationship with your customers and asking for sales when you can't see them face to face. That's it. That's literally, you don't have the ability to talk to people all the time now, and especially face-to-face. And so this teaches you how to do this in a way where you can't see your customers face-to-face. And really, I believe sales funnels are what they're going to help people survive in this time. And if you didn't have a sales funnel three years ago that got you, you know, is going to help you through this, then you need one now. Like you literally need one now. And I'm, I'm excited. I mean, I I really do thank you for bringing me on to talk about this because I just want to get this book in the hands of more people. And uh, you know, I don't make any money off of the book, right? It just like personal. Nobody does. <laughs> and, you know, it's, Newsflash, it's, authors don't make money. Yeah. <laughs> you rolling, you but know? it's it's really it's and and for me, like I said, when I discovered this, when when Don first taught me how to do this, it blew my mind. And I've been doing yeah, it for sure. twenty years, um, but I just went, oh, there's a formula. It's easy to do. I can look at any like because I know the formula. I can really look at any product and I can do this formula for the product and help people grow their business. Yeah. So guys, don't let the the title fool you. You know, uh, when it, when it says made simple, that doesn't. It's not like translation for dummies. Yeah. It's yeah. No. Uh, it, it's taking something that could be really complicated, and a lot of people tend to make it complicated, and it yes. simplifies it. Yeah. Um, you know, and just I would say step by step. I would say, I mean, this isn't like it's not the nuances of 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 how you know like this giant company reaches, you know, billions of people. And it's not that it's, 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 it's really for you. Like I, everybody watching or listening to this, this is for you. I can promise you. So, so go get it. Just like I said, follow the formula, follow what he teaches. And um, don't let the, the idea of story and all that, you know, the the company's called story brand, right? That's, that's Don's, you know, that's his company. Uh, Don't let that, it's not like woo woo and, you know, like mystical stuff either. No, it's just take, it's elements of how we've communicated as a society for, you know, however long you think we've been here. And and applying it to marketing into business. I mean, it's really what I've found. Uh, yep. JJ. These rules actually go all the way back. You can trace it back to Aristotle and Plato, like with people yeah. who really were studying yeah. argument and story. And it just, it works. And that's, I mean, that's why we wrote it is, and we, Don was actually, we were in the process of creating a different book. And I wrote, I, my PhD, I said, was in narrative marketing. And I began to study and I began to see like, oh, what really, 
helps people succeed? Well, first off, does narrative marketing work? That was my first, does, when people use narrative marketing, do they grow their business? Do they save time? Are their customers more happy? Are they more happy? The quick answer to that was yes, it actually, it works. And then my second kind of phase of the dissertation was to study at what are the factors that contribute to success? If you are a large company or small company, if you've been in marketing for 20 years or one year, uh, if you have a marketing department or if you're solo, uh, if you're under 500,000 or you're over 10 million, you know, I just kind of started seeing, does, does it work better for any type of company or type of person? I even looked at male, female, age, education, everything. And over and over, every single factor, none of it mattered. None of it mattered except for execution. Yep. If you did it. And that also meant like if so, okay, well, maybe I don't have time to create all the emails right now, but I have time to create the one liner. Does that make a difference? Yes, it actually you saw improvement in your in your business. Maybe I can just do the email and then I mean the one liner and I can just change some words on my website. Does that make a difference? Yes, incrementally a little bit more. So we changed the book we were about to put out and we just said, let's just help people execute. Let's help them do it in a way that's not complicated, not intimidating at all. Let's just make it very simple. And again, like you said, it's not like four dummies. It's just let's take away the intimidation and let's take away the difficulty of execution and and give people a formula that works. And so that's why we wrote this book. Love it. So today, guys, we covered the curiosity and in, in the enlightenment. You know, you guys, you're curious about Don, you're curious about JJ, you're curious about <laughs> This book, uh, I think we've definitely enlightened you. We've shared, you know, a good chunk of it. You you want the rest, so so go get it. I mean, a lot of people out there think marketing is complicated, and you guys are helping them to see how simple it can be, so they can build the business of your dreams. See what I just did there? Well done. Oh, well done. Are- Problem, oh. solution, success. Yeah, I'm not even that good at it. You know, like <laughs> it takes us like we have meetings for hours about the about the PSR. Sometimes like it's like, yeah. wait, no, no, and then we'll tweak the words, and then sometimes you know, anyway, wasn't and my best it effort. Does, but I it made it takes all. it takes time, and yeah. also the other part. And don't is, be afraid to take time, guys. Yeah. You know? And don't also what we even say. One of the things that we kind of have a mantra around Story Brand. One of our we have many mantras, but one of them literally is, we're not going to laminate this yet. Like we, we start it and we create it, we put it out there and we test it, right? We see, does this work? And so it's not just like that you're going to get the formula and then immediately have everything you need. You, yeah. you have the foundation and you put it out there and you test it. And then you might need to tweak one part, but at least now you know why you're tweaking it and where you're going to tweak, right? So don't be intimidated by this get it and just sit down and take an hour and start going through and going, what is my new one liner? And then test it on your friends and family or when you're in, when Uber, we have Uber again, test it on your Uber driver, you know, um, <laughs> and, and just start doing that and then just tweak it a little bit and then go, okay, got it. Now I'm going to start tweaking on the website. Like what you guys did, you discovered things weren't working as well. Well, let's tweak the words. Let's tweak the design a little bit and just see. And when it starts going up, we go, okay, good. Now let's tweak the next thing and just go it step by step and you're going to see results. Yeah, man. So this has been amazing. JJ, thank you. Golly. Thank you so much. This has been so awesome. Uh, Guys, I hope you got as much value out of this as I did. Like I said, I'm going to listen to it and I, I don't think I've ever, (laughs) I really don't think I've ever done that. Maybe I did like one of my first ones just to see how much of an idiot I sounded like. I don't know. (laughs) Like I promise you, I've never listened to an interview to actually get content out of it, like to make sure because I, I couldn't write the notes fast enough. And and you know, and I have a book. I mean, I've read the book, so it's like I still got stuff out of hearing you describe wow. it. JJ was just kind of like solidified a few thoughts in my mind. So I'm going to share this with my team as well. We're going to get some stuff out of this. We'll be reading this Love together it. as a team soon. And uh, man, guys, again, I just encourage you go grab the book. We'll put a link where you can uh, grab this. So JJ. Thank you. I mean, that's, I don't know what else to say, man. Thank you so, so much for doing this. Well, thank you, Matt. See what I'm saying? I said at the beginning, amazing lessons. I didn't want to delay like how to make marketing simple. It it really is. He really makes it so simple. He and Don in this book make it so simple. And I love, love, love this book. I I said it and I mean it like I actually just finished listening to my interview with JJ. I've, I've, I cannot remember ever doing that before. It is that good. So I want to get your hands on this book. It, it's super, 
affordable, you know, typical price of a book. I don't know. I haven't checked, but you know, it's something you can do during this crazy time. If you're listening to this and while we're all on lockdown, uh, you know, you've got a lot of time. Like <laughs> we started our team call today and I say, like the first words out of my mouth were, Hey guys, just want to let you know, I read 200 pages in a book this weekend, you know, cause that never happens. That never happens. But I read 200 pages in a book. Why? Cause I had time. I had the time. So I want you to go to mattmcwilliams.com forward slash MMS for marketing made simple. mattmcwilliams.com forward slash MMS. Grab your copy of the book. It is that good, guys. I, I cannot recommend it any more than I rec- I cannot recommend a single book any more than I recommend this book. It is that good. I absolutely love it. So go grab that, mattmcwilliams.com forward slash MMS. Um, and also come join us on our daily Zooms, you know, uh, Monday through Friday right now. Uh, like with all this stuff going on, more than anything, we just need community, guys. We just need, I think we need togetherness. We need, you know, uh, we need a tribe. Sometimes we just need to talk to people that are adults. You know, if you got kids at home, Sometimes you just need to talk to other marketers and it doesn't even need to be marketing. So we're doing these daily Zoom calls. We're opening up our Zoom room. Uh, This isn't like a Facebook Live where you chat with us and type. No, we're actually on camera if you want to be. We're we're just talking. We're we're making friends. Uh, We're doing community together, you know, and no agenda, no nothing. I'm not, you know, it's not a coaching thing, although I've done some coaching. It's not a, it's not a mastermind, although there's been some masterminding. It's just, uh, just a, it's like, think of it just like we're meeting at a table in a coffee shop and just chatting and making new friends and, and just hanging out together. So you can find those at mattmcwilliams.com forward slash daily zoom, just mattmcwilliams.com forward slash daily zoom. Go there 4 PM. I probably should have said this 4 PM every Monday through Friday. So every weekday, Monday through Friday, 4 PM, as long as this stuff is going on, as long as most States are under lockdown and countries are under lockdown. And, and this is a, this is still an issue, uh, which, you know, I, 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 sadly, I don't think it's going anywhere. I'm recording this, uh, you know, what a week and a half into it. So just before the end of the month, March 29th, I think, uh, March 30th, I had to look at my computer and what is today's date? I don't even know. Like <laughs> it's crazy. Right. Uh, with no like anchors, we don't have any anchors right now. <laughs> like we don't, you know, we don't have like kids soccer or any of that stuff. So I don't even know what day of the week it is half the time or what date, what the date is. Um, so Monday through Friday, as long as this is going on and I don't see that, unfortunately I don't see this ending in the next few weeks. So we'll be doing this for a while. Um, just go there at 4 p.m. Eastern, mattmcwilliams.com forward slash daily zoom. Grab your book, mattmcwilliams.com forward slash MMS. Stay safe, stay healthy. Um, you know, gosh, it's, I mean, that's all I can say in this crazy time, right? Just to stay safe and stay healthy. And uh, if there's anything we can do to serve you, let us know. See you in the next episode. Thank you so much for listening today. Remember to check out all of our deep dives into affiliate marketing at theaffiliateguy.tv. And if you have a question, you can ask it at asktheaffiliateguy.com. Who knows, might end up being featured on this podcast. Well, JJ, welcome. So welcome. Wow. We're like four seconds. I don't think I've ever done that where I just sound like an idiot four seconds in. I have. I'm putting that in the bloopers. All right. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs>